Welcome to our lecture on theories of motivation. An emotion is a complex reaction to internal and external events involving psychological reactions, behavioral re uh, re reactions, facial expressions, cognition, uh, and effective responses. The effective component of emotion is the subjective experience of what you're feeling that fills your consciousness during that emotion. Now, emotions change in psychological and behavioral states caused by a stimulus or a stimulus context. Emotions are adaptive responses that support survival. Human emotions include four integral components. The psychological arousal, cognitive processes, behavioral responses, and affective or subjective feelings. James Lang theory of emotion states that emotion is equal to the pattern of psychological arousal that a person experiences during an emotion. In short, emotion is a psychological response to an item, to a stimulus, to something going on around you. Cannon Bard proposed that emotion does not or, sort of originate in the body, it originates in your brain. So Cannon's expression of emotion or explanation of emotion was later extended by Philip Bard. And today, this theory is called the Cannon Bar theory of emotion. Cannon's critics of this theory, uh, first, the psychological experience of emotion does not appear to vary from emotion to emotion to the degree that would be necessary to distinguish one emotion from another based purely on our psychological reaction. So that's one thing that the critics of this theory say don't line up. Another one, the psychological. So this bodily aspect of emotion sometimes follows our subjective experience of the emotion. Uh, according to the James Lang view, uh, there can be no emotion before there's a psychological response. And artificially created psychological responses don't give a rise to emotion. Uh, some modern support of Jane Lang theory uh, sort of were based off these criticisms of Canyon. Uh, the most problematic one was that psychological responses are too similar to allow us to adequately discriminate amongst the many emotions that we feel. Psychologists now have new tools to study these bodily reactions, allowing them to examine the psychological response that accompanies emotion sort of in greater detail that then was really possible in, in Canyon's time. Uh, researchers are now able to show that some emotions do indeed involve different bodily reactions. However, these results do not support the entire theory as they do not address the other two sort of ideas that he had. The two-factor theory of emotion. This theory states that emotions are a product of both psychological arousal and cognitive interpretations of this arousal. There was a bunch of different researchers. Uh, Singer is one who agreed with Canyon. Um, in that we do not have a separate pattern of psychological arousal for each emotion that we experience. When we experience an emotion, we experience this non-distinct general sort of psychological arousal. We are then using the situational context to help us cognitively interpret the meaning of this arousal. And it is this cognitive interpretation that leads to the expression of an emotion. Lazarus's cognitive mediational theory of emotion states that our initial cognitive appraisal of the situation that we're in 
determines what emotion we will feel during that situation. Your appraisal of the situation determines that specific emotion. And that the best way to control our emotions is to control how we perceive situations in our lives. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture.